In this video, we will demonstrate how to reset system uh, model after each test. We know that this is a needed uh, capability because uh, we can run multiple tests on the system in model-based way, but uh, every test uh, needs to start from the same system model at the beginning. And we don't know what uh, was the situation when the last test failed. So we require this capability to reset system model in order that each test will start from scratch from the new model of the system. So here we have the system model, which is indeed very simple, off. Then we get a trigger, which is the signal we switch to standby. Then we get trigger, we switch to on, and we get trigger, we switch to off. So if we'll run this model, we see that uh, if we are executing step-by-step uh, -step allowed triggers, like uh, now system standby and then system on, system response is uh, correct, right? But now if I will send some signal, like for example, system again on, we see that signal was ignored and removed because system was already in on state. So in that case, uh, we would uh, be able to check with that model-based testing that system is not responding to the signal, right? That was uh, expected, but was not ex uh, performed correctly, right? But what if system uh, failed and uh, stuck in this uh, state uh, from previous test, and now we want to send a signal, uh, for example, uh, let's say that system stuck in the off state, and now we are sending signal uh, system standby, or and then then this okay right system respond is correct but if system is stuck in signal in state uh, on and we'll send again a new state a new signal new test uh, and we'll initiate a sequence again with the standby we see that uh, it is ignored so here we have system model uh, and now we have a couple of uh, just like very simple tests, right? Uh, in order to demonstrate the capability to reset between tests. So one test, we send the standby signal and we see that system uh, switch to standby mode. So let's see in the diagram that it should be correct, right? Uh, we are at the beginning in off state and we send standby system response correctly. And this is the test case with the stereotype test case, as we can see. Now, the next one is actually sending... Uh, sending standby and then uh, checking that it is in standby with state invariant sending system on and checking that it is in on state so now we have those two tests and if first state fails you know that's that's okay because second state uh, starts from the beginning right but if first state doesn't fail if the system is already you know in some state uh, then the second state, uh, second test, uh, will uh, will transition system again to the the situation. So now let's put those state those tests into the sequence. Actually, yeah, into the sequence. Uh, and for that, I will use um, test context. I will create a sequence of those tests. Here we see one test and another test. So I will run this test too, that it will switch system to the on state. This is this test, right? By drag and dropping a sequence diagram, I can switch to on state. And there's another test which switches to the standby state, right? But as you can see here in this situation, if we are in on state, the signal which will be standby will not be able to switch to the standby state and the second test will fail even if we would expect that each test like let's say that we have 10 of them or 100 of them each would start from the initial system position and in that case it should should pass so now if i will run this uh, this uh, test we see here that second one failed i can check that in the instance table or capture that here it failed right so now let's run and see what happens slowly. So we see that first uh, test is running, it's switching to on state, right? And system is still in on state and you saw the second state uh, went through and we see that it sent uh, the verdict has failed because uh, the system is still in on state, right? It, as it is, 
should be is it an on state, right? So we get that uh, test failed, right? So how to fix this problem? So uh, we could, for example, reset the test, uh, the system by sending, you know, some uh, off signals at the beginning of each test or have some kind of, you know, dynamic uh, uh, mode where we will reset, you know, uh, the another behavior which would send those signals and reset system to initial state. But in all those cases, system model would be modified and that's not good. We don't want that system model would be modif modified by test data. We want that system model, as we can see here, would be independent from the testing, right? And that we can achieve actually using uh, foundational UML, uh, action semantics capability. So we'll reset the system model object by creating new one and overwriting it before then executing next test. And we'll duplicate this uh, capability that it would be reusable on single drag and drop for every test. To reuse it. So for that, it's actually just a couple of actions. So first of all, uh, we want to uh, add structural feature action. So this one will uh, will add a new object to our property of the system, which is S. I call it S. You know, this could be you know different name. So this is in my uh, test block. So this one. And then I need two things, you know, one thing is what is my input, you know, uh, what is my system and uh, uh, context. So in that case is read self, read uh, self action. And that's how I will pass here that uh, I'm reading object as a test context, testing context I'm passing here and then uh, adding uh, something to the S as a, a structural feature of this context. Now, what I'm adding is this uh, solution for this reset. So this is, will be very simple, actually. Just create a new object action. And in this case, this new object will be system. Where is my system model? Here is my system. So I'm creating system again and passing it as input as a value pin. So as a value, I'm passing it here. And uh, that's it, you know. And then there is one very important thing uh, that this uh, structural feature, add structural feature value action can uh, replace all. So it will not create another object for this as part, but it will replace with this new one. So then I can say that I execute this one here. Okay, and then after this one, I do next test like that. So it looks a little bit ugly here and looks a lot more than I would want to do here. But, uh, but let's see, is it working? And if it is working, we can uh, hide the details without no problem and make it reusable, this one, this piece. Okay, so let's run again. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so the first one passed. Actually, we need to check that the second one would not pass automatically unless it passes this one. So I can say like, okay, it is inconclusive for now. Okay, we'll see that it was a, will be updated. And uh, now we see that the system is replaced, replacing this one. Let's see step by step. And still system is in on state, right? For after one so test one, Past system is in on state. You see its state is on. We see state is on. Go now here, here. And suddenly we see that system is, is, is destroyed, right? There is no state for system anymore. And now we'll execute the next test, next test. And then system testing passed and system was created and executed. So we'll, we'll see here results, actually here are results, here passed, passed. So let's, let's repeat that process. Let's put uh, some, uh, for example, um, breakpoint here, add breakpoint and run simulation again, run, execute behavior. So we see that after this, 
HTTP is passed, system is in off state, no more on state. This animation is actually a little bit confusing. It's from previous object, but in any case, it is in off state, as we can see here. And now if we'll continue, again, you know, I can switch this inconclusive, continue, and it passed here, passed, pass. So that's how we could set up a reset function. And then we can select whatever we want to export as new reusable behavior. Right click here, extract, refactor extract here, reset. Next, next, reset, finish. And that's my reset function, which I execute every after each step, after each test. And you see here that it was exported. And now if I want to reuse it again for next test, I just go here, take my reset, drag it here, and that will be reused again after next and so on. So now we will have this working. And I can check that it works actually with this exported reset. And actually before doing this, I will say set those inconclusive uh, default value inconclusive here, default value inconclusive. And um, let me go here, run this test. See passed. We have breakpoint, continue from the breakpoint past. So that was the solution, which uh, actually is very commonly uh, uh, requested. And uh, next video will demonstrate how we build this model from scratch, including all model-based testing capabilities here to capture the data, to record those test cases as automatically generated activities for a very, very simple model, as you can see here. But for this video, we just cover the capability for resetting between tests.